And today we are going to talk together about streamlining vendor collaboration. Um, and I've got four lovely panelists with me today, um, each representing a different vendor. Um, and we have Liz Al Shahabi, Senior Director of 3D at Delta Galil. We also have uh, Ekaterina Brizgalina, 3D Manager at Golden Touch Group. And we have Avani Patel, 3D Technical Director at Garen. And then Topher Harris, Project Manager overseeing 3D um, at Comart. So thank you guys for joining us today. Um, and to kick us off here, so we, we all know that it takes collaboration between a vendor and a brand to ultimately make the end product come to life. Um, and that process, as we already started to talk about at uh, the end of Kelly's session, is most successful when it is a partnership, when it is truly a collaborative process. Um, and of course, 3D helps with that collaboration as well. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to kick us off uh, kind of where we just left off with Kelly. And I'm going to ask you guys, what are some challenges you faced while supporting a brand? Um, and how have you helped to resolve those challenges? Uh, Liz, you want to kick us off? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Liz Al-Shahabi, um, Senior Director of 3D. And thank you for everybody tonight, you know, for being here in browser, for putting this on. And some of the challenges that we face when supporting brands um, is just the sheer volume of information that we're trying to distill and actually put into action. So it's how do we come up with a plan where everybody has, we collaborate with at Delta Galil with so many fantastic, wonderful brands and everybody has their own 3D standards. So it's how do we manage that information? How do we take it in, distill it down and actually put it into place? And how we've overcome that is we really just kind of, you know, streamlined what we can do for each brand when we're like, we have that hat on, we work for that brand, but also it's taking, you know, kind of the best pieces of everything that we're being taught and implementing them from the jump, like that we're just going, we have these great standards in place and that really helps us overcome any challenges we're having, so. Yeah. Fantastic. Topher, would you like to add to that? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you all. So I think uh, for specifically for Comar, um, We've been on this journey, I think since 2017, maybe 2016. And so it's been a really long time. So it's difficult for me to recall all the nuances because the industry was transitioning at that time. So for us, it was um, bringing too many people in the room saying, this is the future, this is what we're doing. And then all of a sudden it blows up in your face because you have one bad, 3D garment that's on the screen, and they said, that's not what it's supposed to look like. And they're right. Um, and so we had to go back to the drawing board, and we kicked a lot of people out of the room. We hid projects behind people. <laughs> um, I was a part of that. <laughs> and I said, okay, who is going to be the change agent for us to go there? Who are we going to partnership with? And for us, it was really simple. It was technical design. They were the ones that actually knew how to create a pattern. They knew how to stitch a garment. They knew what a double needle versus a single needle was. Um, yes, we have designers that don't. Um, <laughs> and I think that right there was our success factor, was scaling back and taking our time with it and starting that partnership with tech. We brought in samples over the time of, you know, hey, this is this is the physical, this is the 3D. And through that, over the ages, we've become very successful at creating that digital twin. Um, we are now um, starting our next transformation, which will be going into the digital space life as everyone else is in the industry um, and trying to get to actually the customer. So using it in e-com, using it um, in, um, in market meetings and using it past just as a replacement for fit or pattern making. And that's really the, the next partnership round that we're about to go through. So that's just been our experience. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Any, anyone else want to add to that? I can add. Um, so the, I would take it as perspectives of constant changes which happen in our industry. Like anytime, I'm sure in this room, everybody can agree there is a time when a line is dropped 
at like the end moment and you have to go in and just like redesign. So I want to bring up that like 3D at that time has really brought that to cover and to help us accelerate when it comes to achieving that. Imagine it like, you know, if we didn't have garments made, like we had garments made and it's dropped, the fabric is dropped, how are you going to achieve it? So, you know, 3D helped us because if the database or the basic core libraries are saved up and worked up, if we can even eventually just do these constant changes right and up in there with everybody there, you know, and that's what it is. Yeah, fantastic, okay. Um, so leading us into the next question here, I want to ask you guys on the manufacturing side. So from your perspective, how has 3D helped? What is there kind of an aha moment that you guys experienced? Um, Ekaterina, do you want to take that one? Hi. Woohoo. Do you hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I could say more about manufacturing side because um, personally technical side of me is very strong. So that's where we started 3D with. And uh, luckily for us, our team was so moving forward towards the 3D to start that process. So we were heavily implementing it in the process. So one day and back from manufacturing, we hear, how about 3D? Can you comment on that for us in the very beginning? So that kind of an aha moment because they loved it. Forget about us that we were pushing it towards them. They loved it. Uh, it helped very much from that side because uh, let's say it's a category that the exact form is not available at the factory. What do you do? You want to see at least something. You want to see something closer to the measurements that you're seeking for and that's where Browseware stepped in with your, our own avatars, not only, you know, brand avatars. And um, that also was a great, great, great experience to see that it worked. The garment that we received only with 3D fitting, uh, actually, it was better because we already fit, let's say, base for whatever, Missy or Junior, but then the plus was happening with that, you know, internal creation, what can we do to move it forward? And we were very, 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 very much surprised and happy with that process. It works. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Anyone else want to add to that? Yeah, sure. I'll jump in. <laughs> um, so like, as I was saying is our journey started with tech. So what we had was is some really great technical designers that were creating some really great patterns in, in browseware. We quickly realized that the samples that we're getting back from the manufacturer uh, or factories um, were fantastic. And we're placing them on dress forms, we're placing them on the model. All of a sudden we realized, uh, I actually pulled this number, 80% of our garments that are coming on in uh, two day uh, you know, market samples or fit approved once we put those market samples on either form and or model. So that alone um, has this tremendous amount of savings uh, internally in terms of a cost standpoint, but as well as uh, partnering with your vendor. Samples are extremely expensive and most of the time your factory covers the cost depending upon the run. And so it's really challenging, especially when you get into a designer's hands, and then you say, well, is it still a sellable and a garment that is compelling and fits really well for that customer? And that's where it comes on in that feedback loop. And that's where, again, that's where we aligned with tech initially, and that's been our quickest win um, and why it's helped out manufacturing less. Yeah, okay, fantastic. That's great to hear, and I think we're, we're kind of already going in this direction, already talking about the positive benefits. So the next thing that I want to ask you guys is, how do you feel that 3D has given you a competitive edge? Um, you know, how, how has it helped you in your market specifically? Avani, you want to go? Yes. Um, yeah, I do feel, yes, 3D has given me that competitive edge for sure. Adding, it's added that added value to me, uh, added to our workflow also. It, Imagining it like, you know, anybody in this room is going to agree as much as I, I will. 
seeing a 2D garment versus 2D flat sketch versus a 3D garment, that's a realistic go there. You can see that real garment right there in a three-dimensional way. I'm, everybody will agree on that. So that itself starts with that extra oom factor, which gives it, gives it to, to us, you know. And also, not only that, with uh, supporting the design team the way we can do it, like, you know, at the live session, we can, like, go ahead and change lengths. We can even edit those patterns and do the design requirement at that very moment. It's great to give that extra help and support. We don't have to wait for turnaround times of samples coming in and, you know, figuring out, oh, my God, that was a mistake or something like that. The same with, with tech. I've supported tech in that matter where we, we've looked at fits and we zeroed in into girths and balances at that time where we have not seen issues in real garments, but 3D has supported to see certain gray areas which we don't see it on actual body forms. So I think that's one of the factor and it's a good, um, you know, prospect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely a competitive advantage there. Um, anything else? Anything else to add? Sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> always got something. Um, so as I was, as, again, as I was saying, um, the manufacturing side alone, just on the pattern making, has helped us significantly. But we're now transitioning. The, our competitive edge now is we just did, for example, we just did Curve. I'm not sure if anyone went to Curve. And um, a lot of our market samples for one of our brands uh, was late due to um, you know, fabric issues with strike offs and everything else like that. So it's the bane of our existence. And um, especially when you take in consideration, it takes five days minimum from a factory to go and get another strike off and back and forth. That's 15 days when three strike offs. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so anyways, what happened was is we did not have um, the market samples. We had a 3D modeler in, um, on the team and we ended up just creating uh, a virtual showroom that we're able to show at Curve. Now, whether the market was a, was ready to receive a virtual showroom, I can't tell you. Um, and what, whether my sales staff was excited to go and use that instead of a physical sample, I'll let you be the judge of that. However, um, this is a 3D conference, and so everyone here should be really excited that people yeah. are starting to push that envelope to get there, because that's really where we all need to live. Don't do your strike-offs after, you know, before the buy. That's the biggest thing. You can save thousands of dollars just on the screens alone. Um, and on top of that, the wastage um, yeah. and, the, and the freight costs. So that's been our success. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, thanks for sharing. Um, next question that I want to ask you guys is how do you balance the need for speed and efficiency with also the importance of accuracy and attention to detail. So that very delicate dance and balance, it's tough to do. Um, how have you guys found success with that? And are there any strategies you can share to talk about it? Liz, I see you nodding, you wanna start? Oh, yeah, no, I'd love to jump in with that one. Um, yeah, the strategies you know that we've put in place, the speed and efficiency is so hard. We're all trying to do more with less these days, right? Like time and resources are a problem for everybody. Speeding up our process with 3D has been so huge that we've just been able to just dive in. Um, we've tried to implement some of the things we already had in place. Like I come, I was an art director for over a decade with Delta Galil. I come from a 2D workflow background and I will tell you, don't throw out what you know already to help you with your brands. Like I have adapted all of that workflow into a 3D workflow seamlessly and it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, it's hard to always create like a well-balanced garment, right? Like we're all trying to do that. Um, so it's how do you balance the need for like, my seams need to be right, my stitches need to be right, have I tested my fabrics? And you know, just trying to just jump in. I've found that if you can just rely on your team, like we have so many people at Delta Galil, if I don't know how to do something, I go to my pattern makers, I go to my TDs, you know, maybe your graphic designers can't, you know, balance a pattern or fit a pattern, but could they make some awesome PBR textures? Like, how do you get everybody to pitch in um, and just really implement things, you know, as I was saying, that 2D workflow, the things that worked for me for speed and efficiency and also like bringing to life some of the excellent designs that we have at Delta Galil, 
um, we've just employed uh, employed all of those methods into 3D and it's worked. So don't throw out what you think you know. Like keep going. Don't be afraid. Just try 3D. Do V-Stitcher. You know. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that. Building off of everybody's strengths and building off of what you know. Yeah. Fantastic. Avani, you want to add anything? Sure. Um, my perspective to 3D, I in my world, I would say the first thing I do is basically ask what the need is for the 3D. Because in my world, I really use 3D in different aspects. There are like, there's a visual chart I've created actually for company wide to use and then like visually show them okay which need is what need do you need for 3d because that will help me set up my files so working efficiently for setting up those files like for example showing out there if we need a fit file not necessary i need to wait for design team to complete their graphics on it to to do my fit file because the main elements for fit file in 3d software is using the right fabric, using that right avatar, and using the right pattern, you do not need to wait for graphic design to complete that whole circle. So that's kind of like helping me work efficiently. And you know, that that is what I pick to choose. So communication, asking that question, and then setting up the file in, in 3D according to the needs. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, and 3D gives you that flexibility. So yes, yeah, totally. fantastic. Yeah, Ekaterina, wanna add? I could add a little bit. So uh, I cannot say that we found the balance. We didn't, because if we would, we would start from A to Z, all in 3D. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, but it's not. Uh, it, as I mentioned before, it really works very well from the technical side because we want to do it there. We're pushing it to be from there, uh, design-wise as. Everybody saw, so everybody knows that you do the scale of the pattern, this, you make a decision while it's happening. But yet, once you have your 3D, that, which you're working with, and it shows you all the proportions, everything, the visual effect of that is so much improving in the process that we can't fight it, right? And we cannot say, no, it doesn't work. It works, it's there. Um, I wish. Uh, that as FIT already has Browseware here, that every discipline will involve 3D in it. So the specialist comes out and they know all the parts of it. So when you hire a person with the 3D experience, it means more 3D will be involved in the process and that's how it will be from A to Z in there. And still, I. Plus that, I want to thank FIT because your students do work with us <laughs> because of Browseware. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Upskilling the workforce uh, before they even get there. That's great. All right, fantastic. Um, so I only have one more question for you guys. I want to ask, kind of to round out our conversation around partnership with brands. Um, what are, are there any key elements that you found when you're trying to partner with brands, um, key elements in the partnership between the vendor and the brand? Yeah. Liz, you want to take that? Sure. Yeah. Key elements. Um, and it's definitely openness, willingness, communication. Um, our brands are learning and growing just as we are. This emerging technology is constantly evolving. It's not you know, oh, we're here, we're going to rest. You have to constantly be in motion and be flexible, be adaptable, be very fluid. Um, you know, we can't, it's, oh man, they just changed all of this. My team can say, ah, their naming convention changed and start freaking out. And it's like, hey, let's just keep moving. Let's keep rolling. Um, and one of the other things is that communication from uh, senior leadership to our senior leadership to really be like 3 ds here. It's now, it's not going anywhere. Let's keep going with it, right? I think everybody in this room, I feel like I'm with my browser family. It feels so good. You know, my change management in the boulder I'm rolling up the hill sometimes doesn't feel that way. So I really appreciate being fed by this night. Um, but, you know, just senior leadership saying to our senior leadership, hey, it's here. It's not going back. Like, it's just, and I can say just, you know, try. You know, find a way to have it work for you. I'm somebody who has a BFA background, I did not know how to sew and I'm a full stack. I can make a pattern, I can balance a pattern and that's been in three years. Take BWU, try to work best with your brands and say yes. If they ask for something, go, 
ooh, we've never done that before, but hey, I'm going to jump and I'm going to try it and have that communication and that openness, but just that fluidity and, you know, not being too rigid. It's been really helpful. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that. I feel like that's great advice for all things in life. <laughs> Anyone else? I could add. So uh, as we all heard from great presentation of Under Armour, I felt myself that I really want to jump in again in 3D like I wasn't there. It was so, so motivating. And um, it was well spoken about trust. So as of today, because we're not doing it the first day, the trust is there. So how did it? How was it earned? Because they really saw the 3D beginning and physical garment when it comes out of it. Uh, again, just to really wish to satisfy both side both sides' needs, meaning. I want to do good for you, <laughs> you want to do better for me, right? Uh, that's, this is a clue. Uh, we <clears throat> Again, as Liz was saying, that standards in the process, they really help because it is easier to follow of what they're asking you from and not creating any process in the way. It's already there, just try to do it accurate and that's what will bring you to a great partnership. And again, I personally, even without anything, the communication is a clue to everything. You have a question, please ask the question. Don't guess. <laughs> you didn't understand something? Confirm that point. Is it really what you wanted? And, you know, we, at the end, we're all trying to do the best just to be happy on both ends. And that's it. It's, 3D is helping in it. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I again, also great life advice, right? <laughs> All right. Any anyone else want to add anything? Or, yeah. It's going to sound the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. You know, partnership, willingness to adapt to newness, yep. and three D is the future. Uh, what a great way to end that. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. <laughs>